Hi, it's Miss Jess. Good morning. It's Palm Sunday. That means it's only one week to Easter. I'm so excited. I hope you guys are excited too. So today we start Holy Week. And uh, in the sermon, you're going to be learning about Palm Sunday. Uh, Palm Sunday is when Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, his, his disciples, his friends, and said, I got to go to Jerusalem. I've got some important things to do. And that's where I want to celebrate the holiday of Passover. And so they went to Jerusalem. And in the sermon, you'll hear about how when Jesus came into the city uh, on a donkey, my goodness, he always had to walk everywhere. So they finally got him a donkey. And people threw palms down and said, Hosanna, Hosanna. And if you can remember my Sunday school kids, you know, we have that whiteboard in our Sunday school room that has church words that we use a lot, but we don't know what, that we don't always know what they mean. You can remember what Hosanna means. It means save us. So Jesus comes into Jerusalem and with his disciples, and he wants to celebrate a Passover meal. That dinner is something that we know as Christians, we call the Last Supper. So I'm going to read to you the Bible story of the Last Supper, which is really important. And then we'll have a quick discussion about it. And then uh, one little homework assignment and then a prayer and we'll be done. Okay, so let's start with the story of the Last Supper. All right, the Last Supper. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world. He wanted to share his last Passover meal together with his 12 closest friends the disciples. Jesus loved his friends and wanted to show them his love in a very caring way. As the friends got ready for the meal, Jesus put water in a large bowl and knelt down on the floor. I think I know what's coming. Do you know what's coming? He wanted to wash the feet of each disciple. There's a lot of feet washing in the Bible. Do you remember Martha and Mary from last week's Sunday school lesson. Remember, it's a way to show people you love them because everyone had to walk everywhere and nobody had decent shoes. So he kneels down to wash the feet of each disciple. When it was Peter's turn, Peter said to Jesus, you will never wash my feet. Hmm. Maybe Peter thought he didn't deserve it. But Jesus replied, Peter, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will later. Peter loved Jesus so much that he said, well, then don't just wash my feet, but my hands and my head also. Peter wanted to be as close to Jesus as possible. As they were eating, Jesus sadly told his disciples, soon one of you will betray me. Betray, hmm, that means to tell a secret you're not supposed to tell. One of you will tell people who don't like me where I am. That was the secret where I am so they can take me away. This upset the disciples and each one said, it's not me you're talking about, is it? When Judas said this, Jesus gently replied, yes, Judas, you will betray me. Then Jesus picked up a loaf of bread. He blessed it and gave some to each of his friends saying, take this bread and eat it. This is my body. Then Jesus picked up a cup of wine. He gave thanks and said, drink this. It is my blood, which I must give up to the sin, so that the sins of people may be forgiven. Does that sound familiar? Bread and wine? Mm -hmm. When the meal was over, Jesus and his friends went to, the, uh, went to a place called the Mount of Olives. Jesus said, sadly, soon you will all leave me. Peter felt bad. But even if all the others leave you, I won't, he said. Jesus looked at his dear friend and said quietly, before the sun rises, you will pretend you don't know me three times. Peter said, Jesus, I love you too much to ever do that to you. And all of the other disciples said the same thing. So that's the story of the Last Supper as we start entering into Holy Week. All right, so bread and wine, body and blood. That probably rings a bell to you because you hear about that in church a lot. It's something we call the Eucharist. The Eucharist, that's another one of those church words that we use a lot, like Hosanna, save us, hallelujah, 
praise him. But what does Eucharist mean? Hmm. Do you think maybe it's Hebrew for washing feet? I don't think so. Do you think maybe it's Latin for having a big dinner? Oh, maybe we're getting closer. Well, I did look it up and Eucharist has something to do with the Holy Communion. The Holy Communion, where we share the bread and wine that represents the body and blood of Christ. So, you know how I love what words mean. Remember when we figured out what all of your names meant? And some of your names were Greek and some were Latin and some were Celtic and they all had meanings. So I did the same thing with Eucharist. And Eucharist is two parts. The E-U means well, like healthy, well. And the second part of the word, uh, Eucharist, comes from the ancient Greek word charis, which is to offer graciously. And graciously means kindly. It means to give something kindly. So what Jesus was doing by offering his body and blood in the form of bread and wine was offering it kindly to his disciples to make them well. Okay, I think I can start to understand this a little bit. So that's what's happening at the Holy Communion. Remember, it's do this, and you, you hear Pastor Ben and you hear Pastor Mike when they when they when they start communion at church it's take of this cup and eat of this bread and do this for the remembrance of me so that's what we're doing at holy communion when we celebrate holy communion is we're remembering that jesus offered himself kindly and graciously to make us well he offered himself he sacrificed himself in order so that we may be forgiven for our sins and that's a pretty awesome thing to celebrate. And we get to do it all the time. Super cool. So that's what Eucharist means. And that's the story of the Last Supper. All right. So the other things, that, so when Jesus gave himself graciously to make us well, um, really truly what that was, was him showing us how much he loved his disciples and how much he loves us. So this week, that's what I thought we could focus on this Holy Week, is the question of the week is, what can you do to show people that you love them? And I thought maybe we make this Holy Week the most loving one ever. How can you show people that you love them? You can do lots of things. You can give them hugs and kisses and texts and video chats and homemade crafts. You can wash their feet. Maybe not. Uh, you can uh, do all sorts of things to show. You can help load the dishwasher. Oh, that would be nice. Um, you can help vacuum and make your clothes and take care of your siblings. Tell people that you love them. And I just think we're going to have the awesomest Holy Week ever. And I can't wait to hear stories about what you do to show people that you love them or things that people did for you. Don't mind, Charlie, we're almost finished. I just knocked over a lot of stuff. I'm going to show him I love him by not yelling at him right now. <laughs> I'm almost done, okay? <laughs> it's just a tin can full of marbles. Could he have picked up anything noisier? So we'll finish this week with our prayer. Remember from last week where God says, I am always with you. And we say, you're right, you are always with me. So God bless each and every one of your wonderful, gorgeous, beautiful faces and your brave, brave hearts. And let's have an awesome holy week. I'll see you guys later.